The Black Mesa incident changed the trajectory of humanity's future. During this chaos, many strong characters played key roles in the subsequent downfall of humanity. It is a meme at this point, but the Half-Life 2 beta truly was much darker and grittier. One of the characters we grew to dislike had a similar story in the beta, however, he and his story also had major differences. Who was this person? How did he change from the beta version to the retail version? And why was he named differently? Here, we explore in the lore and story behind the beta version of Dr. Wallace Breen. Back then, he went by the name The Console. The aftermath of the Black Mesa incident led to a catastrophic worldwide invasion by the multi-universal alien empire known as The Combine. The collective armies of Earth fought hard to defeat these invaders, but they had already depleted their resources and energy after fighting back hordes of hostile Xenia wildlife that had been pulled to Earth by portal storms. Over the following hours, humanity fell as the Combine took down each arm of Earth's armies. It appeared to be over for the human race, and this planet, just like many others, would become a place for the Combine to collect resources and adapt their newly captured sentient species into soldiers and workers in their ever-growing army. After so much death and destruction, Humanity watched on the seventh hour as a man made a deal with the invaders. Only few knew who he was. Up until this point, he had been known as the administrator by his employees at the Black Mesa Research Facility, the very facility that had conducted the experiment that had led to this disaster. The administrator stood at the base of a radio tower. It appeared he had asked for a meeting to discuss a deal. In this iconic moment in human history, he raised his hands up high as a signal of surrender to the Combine as he wore a headset, likely to communicate with the flood of Combine dropships bringing in additional forces to the planet. It is unknown how he used the radio tower to contact the Combine or whether he had worked with them in this invasion, but the administrator and the Combine reached an agreement. The Combine would continue to use Earth, collect its natural resources, and experiment on the population that rebelled. However, only the surviving and compliant population would live under the watchful eye of the Combine and follow their orders. The Combine had formed a relationship with the administrator. He had shown tenacity and leadership qualities that would make their occupation of the planet easier. So they rewarded him and anointed him as the Consul, their human representative and mouthpiece. In his new role, the Consul watched over the species he had saved and kept them compliant. Humanity had survived genocide at the cost of their freedom. Over the years, the Combine rebuilt parts of the broken world and created settlements across the wasteland. These settlements were labelled cities that housed the human population like cattle. It was also said that some citizens were moved every six months to create a feeling of unease. As information was scarce about what existed outside the safe walls of these Combine-controlled regions, the citizens did not know how many cities there were. One citizen spread word that he had been relocated from City 42, suggesting many more existed. The population of Earth hated the situation they had been forced into. They had lost all control and many targeted their blame at the Consul. He had been the one who had made this deal with the Combine. Some even believed he was responsible in some way. Why was he the only person to make contact with the Combine when Earth's leaders were unable to do so? He was also the administrator of Black Mesa, the person who had pushed for the experiment that had resulted in a rip in space that had alerted the Combine of Earth's existence. The Consul was an important cog in the Combine's machinery. He kept the peace of his species, so to protect this resource, they had to set him up in secure locations of the cities he stayed in to keep him safe. Eventually, he moved to City 17 and moved into an office at the top of the Citadel, a dominating spire in the centre of the city. 
This secure location acted as a base of operations for Combine forces in the city and allowed the consul to complete his duties up close. As time passed, it appeared that the consul truly believed in what the Combine stood for and took pleasure in his job in almost herding humanity for them. He wanted to join the Combine and essentially become one of them. The Combine were a collection of various species that had adapted over the years and as such, he too went through modifications to enhance himself. He was a scientist and had that natural thirst to explore and understand the discoveries that the Combine had made in the universe. Down below, in the cities, many hated him for making this deal. However, some saw it from his perspective. They argued, how long can we hold it against him? If he had not made the deal with the Combine, then we would have all died instead. He had essentially saved his race, just at the cost of their freedom. What would be worse? Many people had known the consul before he became the human ruler of Earth. Eli Maxwell had known him very well and now despised him. Eli was now a part of the resistance that planned to overthrow the Combine. The issue many had with the consul was not that he had offered surrender on behalf of humanity, but it was he who produced propaganda and enforced their brutal rules. Those who did not comply were punished severely, some tortured, others were transformed into stalkers and the children were forced to work in factories to create additional combine forces. To keep humanity compliant, the consul created a society of fear and paranoia. He hired citizens to become a part of the human arm of the Combine Army, the Civil Protection. Almost like a police force that watched out for rebellious citizens. These units were offered additional rations and better living conditions. On top of this, he also offered rewards to citizens who reported suspicious behaviours of their neighbours, family and friends. This created a feeling of isolation in the streets. Big Brother was watching and he knew everything. They could not do anything without himself or his forces knowing about it. To further enforce this feeling, he had posters strategically created and placed around the cities. These posters contained his face and each one had a message or vague threat to psychologically condition the humans to behave in a certain way. The console says relax. The console says report. This reinforced a behaviour he and the Combine wanted to be the new normal. Most of these people had never met the Consul, but knew him intimately. His dominating presence was felt even more when large structures with multiple screens were placed around the cities, almost like a compound eye of a fly. From his office, he recorded propaganda pieces that were played all over the wasteland to keep the humans in place. His upper half appeared on camera and he spoke to them directly, addressing those who complied as a true citizen. To enforce this, he typically began his statements with the true citizen. Each of the screens on these structures all displayed the console in these propaganda pieces and each screen looked into different directions, once again creating the feeling that the console could see everyone, everywhere. The true citizen knows that duty is the greatest gift. The true citizen appreciates the comforts of City 17 but uses discretion. The true citizen's identity man is kept clean and visible at all times. The true citizen's job is the opposite of slavery. The true citizen conserves valuable oxygen. The true citizen subscribes to Skyrion. The consul was hated and feared by many, while others understood his decisions and actions. Ten years after the initial invasion, Dr. Gordon Freeman found himself on a train entering City 17. He did not know how he had arrived here or where he was. Luckily, another passenger on the train took an interest in Gordon, Samuel. He noticed Gordon was not wearing his mask and explained that the toxic fumes of the wasteland and city would surely kill him if he did not put one on, and Samuel had a spare one. He continued to explain his view on the Combine invasion and new way of life. 
Samuel was also one of the population who looked at the situation with the consul objectively. He felt like he owed the consul and that the man had not betrayed his species. He had saved them. In his words, it was either strike a deal or lose everything. Through Gordon's adventure, the Combine hunted him as he was deemed a threat to their plans. From City 17, Gordon met many important members of the Resistance. Barney, Dr. Kleiner, Eli Maxwell, Dog, Alex, Captain Vance and Owen. He also met Helena Mossman, who, at this point, he did not know was a spy for the Consul. Upon meeting Eli Maxwell in his secret lab, he caught Gordon up to speed on what had happened in his 10-year absence through a slideshow of photographs of important captured moments. Of course, the photograph that stood out to Gordon was of the administrator of Black Mesa standing at the base of the radio tower as he offered surrender. This man had once been his boss, and Eli Maxwell explained, they call him the consul now. It's worked fine for him, he speaks for the Combine, he shares in their power, as for the rest of us, indicating that Eli was one of the many fighting against him. Eventually, Gordon and Alex reached the top of the Citadel, the home of the Consul, and were surprised to find that his old boss not only looked different to how he remembered him during his time at Black Mesa, but he also appeared to have hidden the modifications the Combine had gifted him on the propaganda he had seen all over the city. The Consul had begun a process of biological modification. He was half human, half robot. He wanted to work with the Combine indefinitely, live forever and learn as much as possible about the universe. So when he was offered a procedure that would make him immortal through artificial life support technology, he jumped at the opportunity. This had a taxing effect on his body, but it was worth it for the end goal. Two variations of the console are currently known about during this encounter. In the first, the consul had successfully gone through the majority of this biological adaptation, which resulted in the loss of his arms so that his body could fit into the machine. In this, he appeared extremely mutated, less than human. In a similar vein to the Nylanth Gordon had defeated on Zen, that creature had also been experimented on by the Combine. In another version of this scenario, Alex and Gordon were attacked by the Consul and Helena Mossman, who revealed herself as a double spy. In this tense moment, Gordon had to speak to the Consul as Helena held Alex at gunpoint, to which Alex stated that the Consul had become just another cog in the Combine's machinery, no longer human. The fate of the Consul is unknown after this point but it is likely that Gordon took him out to save Alex and the rest of his species. The Consul is a fascinating character. Although we do not have a ton of information about him, we can easily fill in the blanks on events that could have happened thanks to the release of the actual game. We have so many parallels between the Consul and Wallace Breen. We'll start with the relationship with Judith Mossman. In the beta, Helena Mossman also works for the console and gives him information on resistance technology and activities. Interestingly enough, Helena has her own base that she works from, Kraken Base, which Gordon visits. As Gordon and Alex enter the Citadel in the beta, she appears to reveal her double spy nature and holds Alex at gunpoint. I'm glad this relationship transferred over. However, in the beta, I guess she did not have a redemption arc. I think the most interesting and core characteristic of both Wallace and the console is their innate drive to survive. They will do literally anything to do this. In Half-Life 2, Breen begs the Combine advisors for safety after his confrontation with Alex, Gordon, Eli and Judith in his office. He even accepts a host body, which we know would have meant he'd lose his physical body and have his consciousness transferred over into a Combine advisor. The beta shows a more brutal version of this, where he is literally surgically adapted to be compatible with Combine artificial life technology. This is uncomfortable to look at. I am not sure which version I prefer, really. With Breen, I always kind of got the sense he still cared for humanity a little bit, but his need to explore other universes and understand them got the better of him. 
The beta version really did not care about his species and truly believed in the Combine's ideology. The control and betrayal of his species was just the, I guess, annoying part of his position with the Combine. The Half-Life 2 beta is clearly heavily influenced by the book, 1984 by George Orwell. The story tells of a dystopian world under the control of a constant, watchful eye, Big Brother. The console's character, and I guess Breen to an extent in the retail game, are very similar to this character. In his position, he rules over and essentially watches over every person with total power, believing he was doing it for their own sake. The beta plays heavily into this with the Breencasts, although they are not called that in the beta. His face is plastered all over the city with propaganda, and I love that psychological element of the game. The citizens always felt like they were being watched. I feel like that was missing from the retail game. It appears he took advantage of an opportunity that allowed him to learn more about the universe and have a greater power over the rest of his species. The console's handling of the invasion was a key moment in human history that split the population on whether they believed he did the right thing or not. He could have used his position of power and connection to the Combine to build his own resistance. Maybe that is why he was despised by many. He was given a position of power and used it to suppress an uprising instead of helping it. Samuel may have had a point. If the console had not made a deal with the Combine, then humanity would have been wiped out entirely, or just experimented on. This version of Wallace Breen was never finished and later adapted into the version we got. So, we will never know what happened to the console in this version. Raising the bar is an incredible source of wealth for these types of videos, and it really helped me understand the direction Valve were going in when they created the game. Some of you who are not familiar with the story may have been a little confused with some of the characters. Captain Vance and Eli Maxwell were two completely different characters who were then merged into Dr. Eli Vance. The beta had so many elements that I do wish had made it into the retail game. Again, I loved the psychological element of constant fear and paranoia. Big Brother is always watching. This is in Half-Life 2 to a degree, but not as much as the beta. Even making this video, I understood a lot more why many of the population hated the console. He could have used his position to secretly help the resistance. As once said by a great man, the true citizen likes and subscribes to Skyrion's content. They also share and comment on the video for additional food rations. Finally, I would like to thank my true citizens, my gold tier patrons and channel members. Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, Chicken Guy 791, Ruben Mendoza, Mousefillet, Laza Lowell, Duke, Toadnut, Oren X, and Azu. If you want to be a true citizen and support the channel, then there is a link in the description to become a patron where I do my best to post behind the scenes content, early access to videos, and many other great features. As always, thank you so much for the continued support. Which version of the character did you prefer, the console or Dr. Breen? Would you have made the same decision if you were in his shoes during the invasion? And what topic would you like me to cover next? This is where our story ends. Check back next week for a new one. <laughs>